Hello everyone, today I want to showcase my most broken Gale Frost PvE build. This build is probably one of, if not the best PvE build you can make right now, and I've been asked way too many times to show off this build after sending clips of it in the Deep Broken Discord. So today, I'm going to finally show it off. Just to show you what this build can do, I'm going to put a few clips of me one second and different bosses in the game with ease. This can range from Primadon to Ferryman to Ephron. It's pretty crazy. That was just a small showcase of my build and what it can do. And honestly, it's kind of insane looking back at that since I actually have around 20% DVM and I'm still one cycling Ephron. Anyways, you might be wondering, how do I make a PvE build like this? And how do I get a build that can one cycle Chaser, Ephron, and other bosses extremely easily? Well, you're in luck. Because this next section of the video is about how you make my build. My build's race is Vesperian for the extra 3% resistances it gives. However, you don't actually need to go Vesperian, as any race in the game will work for this build. However, I'd recommend going a race without Intel as a starting attribute, as you want Intel to go as low as possible and this may mess with Shrine of Order. Anyways, for pre-Shrine of Order, I meant these stats here. I recommend going the Agility first to get Ghost out of the way, and then going Willpower for Underdog. Underdog increases PvE damage since the enemies have way more HP than you do, which is really broken for PvE. Next go Intelligence for Perfect Flash. This increases all magic damage by 25% when above 95% HP. So as long as you don't get hit, you'll deal 25% more damage permanently. Finally go Fortitude for Exoskeleton for that nice 10 HP, and also Resistance buff. Post Shrine of Order, and these are the stats. First go back up to 25 Agility and 20 Strength. This is so you can get Spine Color, which you actually can't get without doing this. Then start leveling your Gale Rep up to 75. After that, level your Frost Roll to 65 to get Orbital License for your other talents. Then level your Charisma up to 25, because Charisma gives you Taunt and Tough Love, which are extremely OP in PvE, and one of the main reasons this build can one cycle. Finally, go 85 Frost Shore for Crystal Shrapnel, and 30 Heavy for a Grand Suit Ruska. This build needs a Grand to do high M1 damage, meaning you'll probably need to grind for one. However, they're extremely easy to farm for, because you can get them to equip to the Unbroken. Editor's note, whilst editing, I actually realised the Rex to Crystal Shrapnel got changed from 85 to 60, meaning you no longer actually need 85 Frost Draw for this build to work. However, I still recommend going as high into Frost Draw as you can, as it makes your matches and M1s do more damage. And who doesn't like free damage? Anyways, back to the video. Here's the list of the matches that I took on this build. Each one has its own use, which I'll explain later. These are all the talents that I would have taken if I fully min max this build, which obviously you don't need to do, but however, you know, if you want to, because you'll be able to get knowledge extremely easily, you can. Don't stress if you don't get them though. Finally, here's a picture of my traits, boons, and flaws. I'd recommend getting 6 Songchan, and if you're really crazy, you can even go 6 Proficiency instead of Vitality to deal more damage at the cost of being insanely squishy. Alright, so now your build is done, you're probably wondering how to even do PvE and one cycle bosses like Chaser. So here's a few quick tips on how to utilize this build to its maximum potential. Make sure you modify Wind Passage with 3 perfect lenses. This gives it a lot more distance unless you go fast through layer 2. You can use Wind Passage to clip through walls. A notable one is the first door of layer 2. You can do this by jumping as you get teleported, as shown in this clip. Make sure you put the key in, however, otherwise Chaser won't spawn. You can skip all the way back to the spawn by Gale leaping off this ledge, then using Gale Lunge and Wind Stepping at the same time, and following up with a Wind Passage for more distance and to cancel the full damage. This will get you to the Ignition Union Hook where you can go up and run all the way to the Kairos people to hand in the spear. Then you can just Wind Passage clip straight through this door again to skip the entire Fur Fire Cavern. Make sure not to use Wind Passage in the Bounder Chase until you hear them spawn in. It's pretty easy to hear them though, so you won't have a problem with that. This is because you might skip over the Bounder Spawn Trigger and be unable to kill Chaser as he won't spawn in. On your way to Chaser, make sure you beat a Avonkeeper on your way there. 
This is to get Chains of Perfection stacks which are basically required on any build to one cycle the boss, without just one shotting him with a glitch anyways. When fighting Chaser, stand by the last jar and wait for him to attack, then use Ice Cubes, break the jar, and run down and taunt him instantly. Follow it up with an inhale, then throw a Gale Trap on him. Use Warden Blade early, as it lasts for quite a while and you want all to hit him. Then you can just spam your mantras 1, 2, 3, 4, and it should one cycle chaser. If you're still stuck off from making this build, here's a picture of how many medallions you get per layer 2 run after the change that they made to medallions loot. That's like 72 die packets right there. Look at the possibilities. That's basically all the tech and stuff I have to show you. Now you must go on your own PV adventures and show the world this bird's glory. Go grind those idols and sin ashes, and make sure you subscribe for more videos like this as I'm almost at 2k subscribers. That's all from me, and have a good one.